Get everyone, the Asian dad here. We're gonna do the unboxing and first impression of his Dell Precision 3550. It's a 15 inch mobile workstation from Dell and is their 2020 entry model to the mobile workstation class. Now I'd first like to make a big thank you to Dell ANZ team for providing this unit for review and I will be creating a follow up video of after I spent some time with it to actually put an in-depth review of this 3550. Now, I will like to make a mention for those who are joining me for the very first time is with my unboxing and first impression is I have never seen this unit <laughs> firstly and I haven't even seen the picture of it as well. What I normally do is just go through the quick spec sheet just to see what it can be configured with and that's pretty much it. And I just let the rest be a surprise just like it is for you guys as well. So without further ado, let's get on to the unboxing part. So first I've got my good old trusty knife as I always do the unboxing. Now, I have, this is a very new class to me, the 3550. I normally get the 5 series range, and so I'm just gonna do this away from me, of course. I'll do the last two slits down this way as well too. And I normally have get the 5550 series. If you haven't seen that video there, I will put a link in the description below there so you can check that out. But this should be a little bit well, closer to that is what I'm expecting there. So let's kind of bring that across. Now let's just bring this up and just flip it down like this side here. And okay, now as always, I always go for the power. Let's see what it comes with. So I've got the power cable here, of course, and we're just gonna go for it and just get this thing out. Now I'm gonna be excited to see what this is. Okay, this is a big one. Or well, bigger one than I use for class. Now it is actually running a 90 watt power supply. Sweet. And it's a barrel style power supply too. So it's not using the USB C. Now, I'm liking that. That's very hopeful. I like the fact I can see a barrel style USB C instead of USB C, sorry. Uh, with the Precision 5550, that was a uh, USB-C power adapter, so I'm liking that. So you can actually reuse some of your old power supplies if you've got previous Dell, so I like that feature there. So let's also find out what's going on. So let's just take that one out of the way and oh, bring this across. All right, and we've got a bit of other stuff here. And we've got some nice little bit of stuff. And there's just more paperwork, we'll just throw that away. And we've got another one here. That's one that's for myself, and I'll throw that away, and that's pretty much all there is for it. That's sweet. Okay, let's have a look at the computer itself. Now, this is a very different one to the Precision 5550, which is, I like to see a different thing. Okay, let's sort of bring this out. Okay, now, this. All right, wow, we. Now this here feels more like actually a latitude range. I've had a few latitudes and this feels more like a latitude, uh, just the actual build material. So that's pretty much polycarbonate over the top and polycarbonate at the back. And it's the same on the side there. That's probably to bring the cost down because this is substantially a lot cheaper than the Precision 5550. And it hasn't got the crazy thinness. So this is actually a really nice sort of one there. For sure. Okay, now I'm just going to go quickly through the ports first on the right hand side. So I can see a smart card reader there. I've got exhaust and we got a USB A port, which is good. So I like to see legacy ports here. And then we've got a USB C port. Now this is a Thunderbolt, probably does power as well. And then we've got AC barrel style. I'm liking that. And there's nothing at the back there. And then we've got a security port here. We've got the Ethernet RJ45 port, which is on the lever system. I'm liking that. We've got the HMI port. We've got two more. USB, I think they're probably USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports. And then we've got a headphone jack, we've got an SD card reader, and then we've got USIM card reader as well too. So, wow, this has a very good range of ports, I've got to say. This is very nice. I'm liking the fact that you've got this range of ports because that's very good for a lot of businesses there. So I'm gonna quickly just employ a lot of my helpers here to bring us to stand here and then we'll just open it up and have a look what it looks like. Okay, here we go. So, I'm sorry, let's bring this, Oh wow. I can straight away see something very, very different. That fingerprint scanner is very different to a lot of the other fingerprint scanners because normally they're integrated with the 
power button but this one is not integrated with the power button and it's very unique so I have a feeling this one is has a fair bit of tech in underneath that one there which I will read about when I do the review now straight away I can see we've got the good old I call it the keyboard nipple or I, as always you've seen in my very early videos I call it the G-spot as well because it's where it's located today so it's, that's actually back in here which they've slowly to lose in some of the latitude range and of course the precision range have lost them as well too so that's back there and you've got the three buttons on the bottom to support that track point there and then we've got the mm, I'm just feeling the actual trackpad it looks substantially small, but I know that's actually a good size because when you put your palm there, it's actually a good size there. It looks, just looks small because of how big this is. This is a 15 inch thing straight away to you. You've also got the full size keyboard with the number pad there, which is good there. You can definitely see. And the keyboard. Now the keyboard is more closer to uh, the previous year, which is the 2019 latitude range. So this is the keyboard I have seen before and I quite like it. Very durable keyboard for sure. And let's just have a look where the, oh yeah, we've still got all the nice range of buttons there. I'm liking that there. And we've got a uh, privacy shutter for the webcam. That's nice to see. And let's see if I would just boot it up. Now I've never had very good luck in booting up a computer on camera. But let's see how we go. Have we got any power? Or do I have to like bring in another power into it? Sorry, this is probably what, like I said, I've never had very good luck in turning a computer on on camera and usually I will have to employ uh, some power there which I'll probably will try and do I'll bring in our power just to bring that in to see how we go maybe I just might need to charge it up just to start it up that's all sometimes this happens on me a lot just to bring, start it up so with booting it up I can definitely see there's a backlit keyboard straight away and it's got a nice gorgeous screen I can definitely tell that it's an anti Layer one, so it's a matte sort of half the screen, and I'm wondering if I get a touch. I actually see what have I got. I have got an i5. They are using 10th generation Intel there, and you can actually get an i5 or i7. I know that. And as for the RAM wise, you can get them up to a maximum of 32 gigs. So with the 5550, you can get a maximum of 64 gigs. So this one is a little bit lower end in terms of the maximum capacity as well. As for hard drive wise, it can take in one slot of M.2 PCIe, as well as one two and a half inch hard drive there. So we'll check that out when I do open the computer up for internals in the review video. So I can definitely see now, do I have a touch screen here by chance? Nope, I don't have a touch screen, that's fine. I'll start to set it up. And the display looks very similar to the Dell Latitude 5000 series. And I've got to say, I do like them because they are very durable screens and I've had a lot of those Dell Latitude 5000 series around and around. And I really don't really put much warranty repairs for them, so, which means they do a lot of work and don't have much issues, which is fantastic there. So I'm going to slowly set this up as I was setting up the computer just to get into Windows. I've got a major convention. I did notice that the actual hinge on this computer here are brush aluminium. You might see that as plastic, but this one is brush aluminium, which means this can take a fair bit of movement around i can definitely can tell you that now i have not actually brought in uh dell latitude 55 10 yet so this gives me a very good preview of maybe what to expect for the dell latitude 55 10 and this i'm taking this the keyboard very very similar there but the spec wise will be a little bit different of course now this one can house uh for the graphics wise can house uh nvidia quadro p520 and whereas the latitude would be more than likely be the GeForce MX250, I think it is, or the 150. But I definitely like the feel of this so far. It brings me back many of the good memories of the latitude series, and I do like them, so they're very durable there. So I am very, very keen to play with this one here uh, to see this one here. It's got all the nice, good range of ports. It's not the lightest thing, actually. In terms of lightness, this is pretty decent it's not heavy at all i don't have to say it's probably I'm, i'll have to have a check the specs of this one here i'm thinking it's probably around uh, for my own feel about 1.55 or 1.6 kilos here so that's not bad for a 15 inch for sure it's not thin which is good i actually don't need thin sometimes because i rather have the range of ports which this does have 
and I like going to have a range woods which I don't need to carry dongles around there and having the old AC port barrel style still there which means a lot of the old power adapters can be still used so you don't have to purchase more new ones if you've got those lying around the house or the office there which is fantastic in a way. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Would thinness, would you sacrifice thinness or you would you rather like have your ports uh, definitely put a comment below there. and the other thing I like to say with the thickness is at least you actually have a bit of breathing space for the thermal solution so you can actually get more air out so I definitely like to see the thermals on this computer here when the time comes now while I'm at it I might as well do the one finger test to see how much force is needed to open the lid so oh it actually takes a little bit more so it looks like I need two fingers there to open the lid and I'm not, since I'm at it I might as well see how far this go back now this should be clamshell so it does about 180 degrees now since I'm at doing that I think you might want to actually see this I'll just bring this back up because I know as people realize if the 7 series this will then use hitch no nope, that does not lift uh, lift up at all which is actually good because it doesn't scratches the bottom part of the back end of here so I know the 7 series kind of do does kind of lift it up a little bit and it kind of does after a period of time could scratch it but this one does not so that's kind of nice to see and I definitely like to have a bit of time on this and I will create a follow-up video for you now I hope you enjoy this video and find it informative if you did give it a like and if you haven't done already subscribe to my channel but hit the subscribe button bottom right of the screen I do try to upload a new video every week and just remember imperfections in life makes it beautiful and interesting I'll see you next video.